And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. What's up, party people? What is up? It is summer. It is hot. But it is the fall real estate market. It is not the summer real estate market. It is the fall real estate market. What is this guy talking about? We're going to get into it. We will explain that as we make our way through the show. But we are here to answer your questions. 214-310-0008. DFW breaks all the rules in residential real estate. The world could be on fire. And DFW usually continues to plug along as a healthy, attractive real estate market. And we have defied the odds once more. We'll get into some of the statistics and some of the headlines. You know how much we love to defy the headlines, to talk about the nonsensical, misleading shenanigans, tomfoolery, hooliganisms even, Courtney, as my high school baseball coach would say, um, that are headlines about our real estate market. We'll talk about what's actually happening and what you need to know. Now, lean in here. What you need to know, even if you are not buying, selling, or investing, If you own a home, if you rent a home, what do you need to know about our local market? What's actually happening? uh, What tends to always happen here compared to the rest of the country? We're going to talk about that today. We're also going to talk about a bunch of other things, including whatever it is that you want to talk about. 214-310-0008. Call or text with your questions or comments now 214-310-0008 or go online to toddtremonteteam.com where you can uh, fill out some scorecards find out if you're ready to buy or sell you can search any home from any real estate company in all of dallas fort worth at toddtremonteteam.com you can find access to videos educational real estate videos uh, local area info videos Uh, you can get uh, podcast episodes all of that starts online ToddTremontiTeam.com. Like my son says, at ToddTremontiTeam.com. Okay, we're going to jump right into it today. Then we'll back out a little bit, give you some updates. But let's get into some uh, Q&A, but before that. This first segment is brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to get a mortgage, if you're looking to refinance, reach out to him. Go to patrickgaleros.com. You can start an application right there on his website. You can give him a call at 972-728-3420. NMLS number 308-804, patrickgaleros.com. Um, one of the questions that we've got for this week is, how does area development impact property value? For example, a Whole Foods going in, or there's a bunch of HEBs going in, nice mm. hotel. There was... There's a there was a hotel that one of our team members was telling us about in somewhere in Fort Worth that was getting built. Yep. Like, how does that impact uh, property value? First of all, let's see if we can get producer Courtney on the line for an HEB sponsorship. I could do that with <clears throat> passion and energy. Um, th- it's a great question. It's a broad question. So let me give you a broad, a general answer, and then some specifics. The answer is <clears throat> development always impacts property value. Now. I want to use a term that much of our audience probably is not quite as familiar with, but the term is price elasticity. And what that really means is the value of almost anything is elastic. It moves, right? The value of your home is moving all the time. It might be worth more today than it was yesterday. It could be worth less this afternoon than it was this morning. If that sounds crazy to you, that's okay, but it's true. If your neighbor's house catches on fire, that's going to impact your property value. If the city announces that they're replacing the water mains in front of your house, that's going to impact your property value. If the neighbor gets loud, angry dogs, that's going to impact your property value. If the school district does something, that could impact your property value. These All these factors are moving our property values around at all times. We call that price elasticity. It's elastic. It's moving. It's, it's, it's flexing and contracting and expanding at all different times. Now, specific to one thing like, hey, they're building a Walmart on that land in front of the neighborhood or a landfill or a hotel, then typically that's logical, meaning it's a pretty uh, attraction. They're building a park. Ooh, that's good. People want to go to parks. They're building a landfill. Ooh, that's not so good. We need them, but we don't really love them. They don't always smell good. They don't always look good. So a hotel, to be specific, 
depending on the area and depending on the quality of the hotel, from a value perspective, meaning what is what could you be taxed on and what might a buyer pay for that, is usually going to be a positive, but not always. If your back fence used to back up to a beautiful field with flowers and bunnies, and now it backs up to a parking lot for a hotel, your property might have been somewhat negatively impacted by that. If you live back into a neighborhood in an area where there were no hotels, and now there is a hotel three minutes from your house, that's probably a positive. The area is developing more and it's got more vibrancy and commercial benefit. And, and generally speaking, the area just became more marketable and more valuable. That could be a positive. So there's a lot of nuance to this, but specifically speaking, it depends on where your house is and the proximity to the development. Generally speaking, if it's desirable development that people want to live by and you're not literally next to it, it's going to be positive for your property value. So how do you, how do you know that, that the house you're looking at is is the right one? Like when it comes to thinking through like is something going to get built in the future? Is this a place that nothing's going to get built near? Is Rel in relation to development? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let me give you an example again and then you can specify your question if I go the wrong direction here. But a lot of times people will say um, we love this house because it backs up to that green space or that field or that whatever available lots. Um, I would be cautious in that scenario and I would want to know who owns that land. How is that land um, restricted if it has any deed restrictions or city restrictions? If it's a green belt, that's different too, right? Well, Yes, the how, depending on how we define greenbelt. If that's a city-owned or county-owned greenbelt with power lines or hiking and biking trails, that's going to be that for the foreseeable future, yeah. probably forever. If it is a green space that's in between lots or whatever, now the question is, hey, what's the, you know, how is the city labeled that? Um, is that a, is it their intention that that gets used for development or, you know, water runoff? Is it intended for, uh, community space or is that zoned industrial well, it's right? like our house backs up to mm -hmm. we have some creeks that run through our neighborhood and so our house backs up to a bunch of trees and a creek and there's never going to be a home I can't built build right on there. that because yeah. it's a watershed yeah it's a i don't want to tell people where you live but um the point is that's designed thank you that is designed for to move water uh, you have to have that, like a retention pond is not going to be developed later. Now, we've told the story of the woodlands uh, a couple months ago, and we did some videos on that. That was just marshy, supposedly useless land. They built lakes. Those lakes will always have to be lakes because they retain that water. In your area, that's runoff. It has. That's where the water has to go, so they'll never build on that. So you have an incredible positive to your lot because you will have views of nature, and you'll have good runoff forever because that's what's there. Now, someone else might say, there's 10 acres behind my house. No one's, it's just been, it was farmland 100 years ago, and it's just kind of an open, pretty field now. Well, you better be careful because the city might have recently changed the zoning on that to mixed use or industrial or retail or whatever. And now what that really means is that whoever owns it at some point in the future is hoping to either use it or make money from it. And the city is hoping that it gets used that way, city or county or whatever. So that's a long answer. But the point is you need to know what is the zoning? What is the planned use? Who owns it? How long have they owned it? What's happening in the area with other properties like that? Um, I live about 200 yards from a, a plot of land that's owned by a nearby church. The church is a church that's not necessarily locally owned and operated. They're part of a denomination that's globally, if not nationally owned and operated. <clears throat> but that church is not necessarily thriving right now from a financial perspective. So I've kind of got my eye on what would that church do with that land if ever they needed to? My guess is apartments. I'm fine with apartments, but I would rather not that not be apartments in that spot. I'd rather be a park. I'd rather it be, you know, single level retail or something like that. So yeah. I know who owns it. I know how they have handled their land in the past. And I know what the city would want there if there was a new owner. Does it mean I have any control over that? No. But I've thought about that as I have chosen to buy there, stay there, build there, that kind of thing. 
you've not checked your home or auto insurance recently, do so. Contact DP Lambert with Goosehead Insurance, dp.lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at goosehead.com. I actually reached out to DP this past week, saw some hail damage on my car. He's got everything squared away from me and we'll be getting that taken care of, but he was super fast as always and just his response time and making sure I got what I needed. Uh, dp.lambert at goosehead.com. He saved me thousands of dollars over the years. Uh, question, Ian. <clears throat> yes. Would you say that a lot of households lately are looking looking to tighten up their budgets? That's a fair comment. Would you say that homeowners insurance and auto insurance is a part of most people's budget? I would also say fair comment. Have you also run into lots of people that haven't shopped their insurance in a while? Uh, 100%. So heads up, everybody. Mm-hmm. If you're looking to save some money, be really efficient with your household budget right now, reach out to DP. Maybe he can save you money. Maybe not. Maybe you have the perfect coverage at the best price. And if so, you'll sleep a little bit better at night knowing that. But if not, you might be able to save a thousand bucks a year or 1800, like some of our recent clients and friends. Um, I would call him if you're, if you're looking to save a few bucks here and there and potentially hundreds if maybe thousands, why would you not make that phone call or just send him a quick email dp.lambert at goosehead.com. If you've not checked your home valuation recently, go to dallashomerealty.com, go to toddtramonyteam.com. You can click the home valuation tab right there. It'll take you less than one minute. You can find out what your home would be worth. You can find out what cash offers might look like. You can see what your home equity is going to be like. You can go to toddtramonyteam.com, click the home valuation tab. And if you want reminders of any of our vendors that we talk about, you can find all of those under the radio tab on the same website, toddtramonyteam.com. I normally do this in the second half, everybody, Uh but I'm not going to be here. Spoiler alert. Oh, gosh. We're going to do it right now. We're going to do the Cockney rhyming slang word of the week, folks. Are we ready? No, 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 no. This oh, is, sorry. This is, sorry. That's the wrong, that's the wrong mm-hmm. button. You need like, the applause button. Is well, that's to be determined. Oh, and Courtney's back. Courtney's here, everybody. All right, okay. here we go. I'm nervous. Ready? Yes. We've been doing pretty good recently. I know. I think we're three for three on the last I one. Know. We're, we've been doing well. Cream crackered. Oh, gosh. Cream crackered. Usually it rhymes with the second one. Something like smackered. You want to use it in a sentence? I don't want to use it in a sentence. Cream crackered. Something with your mental state. Smackered. It's going to be something that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, smackered. No, no, that's not my final vote. No, hold on. Cream crackered. She was cream crackered. Tired, drunk. I mean, that's how you would use it in a sentence. She was cream crackered. All right, tired, I think. Exhausted. Close. It's knackered. Which is exhausted. exhausted. Yeah. Tired. Yeah. I, what did that I say? Smackered? Smackered. Yeah. smackered. I didn't know the word knackered, but I'd heard it before. So I don't think we get. What do you. How, you, you no, great. you don't get that. Yeah, we didn't get that. Yeah. Yes, we, we did. No, so so he knackered is tired. So here's right, but the. It's not tired. But here's the thing about this whole bit that he's imposed on us and just wasted all this time. <laughs> it's not about actually knowing what it means, it's about getting the random word that often doesn't rhyme, but it's supposedly right. Yeah. Drink some culture. Cream crackered, show. which is longer than just saying knackered, which is harder than just saying tired. I'm just trying to bring culture to the show. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Did you also see the British Grand Prix last weekend? Two, but I think we got it. Two Brits in the top three at the British Grand Prix. It was pretty exciting. Well, it is the British Grand Prix. So Baby Lando came second. Probably, probably should so win. Hot. Sir Lewis. Oh, gosh. What did you say? Third. I mean, he's so hot. Baby Lando? Yes. Because, just, like in the like in the vehicle no, because the temperature face, is so high. His face is beautiful. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I, I mean, I can't. Okay, even well, okay, I muted it just to protect you from yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> big, she's a big racing fan, folks. Clearly, for, for the cars. What she meant is the temperature in the cab of the vehicle is so hot that <laughs> she re- she celebrates the physical endurance and athleticism that is required to operate the machine. Hey, you want to talk some real estate? I think we should at this point immediately. (laughs) All right. So one of the questions that we get fairly regularly uh, from our buyer clients is, is how how many homes should I see before deciding to make an offer on a home? Actually, five or less. Um, Here's that. That's my real answer. Five or less. And here's why. Let me give you a quick explanation. 
It depends on what you mean when you say see. Most people mean physically yeah, walk physically through going the house. And, looking. and my answer is you shouldn't have to see more than five houses. Now, there are exceptions to that in a certain market where there's not any ideal inventory. And so you're having to potentially flex your criteria a little bit to see if getting inside a house can kind of change your viewpoint or your standards a little bit. Now, we're not ever asking you to go see a house that doesn't meet your standards. But the point is, if the house that you're looking for may not be out there right now, we might look at a few other ones. <clears throat> but realistically speaking, you should use technology to help you dramatically reduce the number of homes that you need to get in your car and drive over to and walk through. I apologize, people. Courtney and now Ian are swooning over race car drivers from cell phone images in the studio. I'm just trying to bring you value in regard to your real estate. I apologize. Uh, it's, it is a distraction. Here's the thing, though. You, you might look at 180 houses on the internet, or for example, if you're working with our team and you come into the office, we can give you a backstage pass to the MLS. We can help you see not only what brokers and agents see, as well as what everyone can see on the internet. We could also get you access to things like our private portfolio list of homes that are off market that everyone else cannot see. But we do those things in the office on the internet, through email, in the comfort of our home. And we really only should be going out and investing the time and energy and inconvenience to see what we call contenders or finalists. And if you're clear enough and you have a good strategy on what your non-negotiables are, and if you've gone through a strategy session, which every responsible buyer should have done, you met with a lender or you have your cash situation clearly understood, and you've established your non-negotiables and you know the boundaries and you know your budget and you don't put yourself in a position to be a dangerous, impulsive buyer and make a decision that's not wise for you and your family and your finances. If you've done all those things, which you should do up front, then you should really only need to go see two or three or four at most five homes. There are exceptions. I already stated that. But eight and a half, 85 percent of the time, you should be out with a great agent, lender, title team, inspector team looking at three or four or five houses and being able to make a decision guilt-free within a week or two. I think the key to, to what you said there is um, the strategy session piece, right? Yeah, for sure. It's making sure that you have a conversation on the front end. It's making sure you have a sit down. It's making sure that you really go through and explain what it is that you're looking for and that the agent fully understands that, spends time with you, face-to-face -face looking on the MLS as to what's available. And beyond the MLS. Yeah, to be able to make sure that they're only showing you properties that really well, make sense. Let's, let's play a little devil's advocate here. But Ian, I just want you to show me the house. Just, op I just get, open the door and show me the house. That's what I need to do. I need to find out if I like the house. I'd, I'll meet with you later if I like the house. That's and, what I need. And it's, it's just not in your best interests. And that is one of the hardest things for buyers to hear yeah. sometimes, right? Like I've done this five times already. Yeah, but you've never done it at a level that really served you well. well I think that's one of the keys, right? Mm. We, we, when we talk to people that reach out to us, we're explaining to folks like, hey, we've, we've done this for so many years now. Thousands of times. We, we've figured out when it doesn't make sense. And I'll be honest, like when we have a new agent join our team, yeah. If they if they have somebody reach out to them that's just like, hey, this person really wants to meet me at the home and you know, then we'll then we'll meet afterwards. Can I go do it? And we want I wanna say no, but what I genuinely say is yes. Learn this lesson. Learn the lesson. And if I, I can honestly say every single time that that's happened, the lesson has been learned. Yeah. Now here's the thing that a lot of if you're paying really close attention, you you may be picking up on. It's easier for the agent to just go show you a house. For sure. It is not best for the buyer to just go see a house. It is best for you to plan ahead. Like with everything else, mm -hmm. it's not wise to just marry the first person you go on a date with. It is, I mean, or it, see. it may be, but it's not just because, oh, they said they'll go on a date. Let's get married. Let's not buy a house <laughs> just because we ran out and saw it. Let's, before we do that, let's have a strategy session. Let's think through budget, timing family needs, job needs, commute, what's important to us. You know, otherwise you're going to be the little bitty child in the checkout line at the store impulsively wanting a lollipop, right? Oh, Ooh, this house is amazing. I want it. I want it. I want it. But you didn't slow down, get the advice of an expert that knows what to protect you from and knows what to point you towards and can help you evaluate what you actually want. How often do our 
full-time agents meet with the buyer that because of a, a really good inquisitive diagnostic consultative meeting, realize they have needs that they didn't quite realize they needed before because they hadn't thought through it that well. It happens All on a regular time. basis. Full price, Courtney has something to say. The more I listen to this show, which is weekly, yeah, I realize I'm not sure y'all would take me as a client. It turns out that you are actually producing this show. <laughs> And so the the fact that you listen I'm weekly, glad is, she listens. it's somewhat encouraging. I mean, I don't know that she's listening. I'm to learning all of a it. lot, and we have a wait list. And I am confident y'all would say <laughs> we cannot take. You. Well, oh, I already know when I when I bought my house with this team before I joined this team, I was not an ideal client. Yeah his wife was and then he became one but the reality you know we don't have a ton of time but the the reality is ian was like um well he's an independent person you know why is this person telling me how to do it? why do i have to come into the office why are we meeting in the office why are we doing it this way you know why does this sound so structured and blah 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 and i mean you could tell the story but he's on the team now like he, he obviously became a believer and and realized I'm working to get my way there. There are things hey. that there are things that an inexperienced buyer seller, maybe they've done this one or two or three times, but not thousands of times. It's like, well, this is how it works. That's what I want. That's this is the, this is what's best for me. And we are constantly that's why we have a radio show in some ways. We have this uphill battle of education that's actually not best for you. It is not best for you to run out the second you decide you're ready to buy and become emotionally committed to one property without having thought through budget, timing, what's best for you, your family, your finances. Um, people will follow, like that master bathroom has a sauna in it. I mean, let's get that one. You're like, hold on. You said what was really important was five bedrooms. This one has four. And now you're rationalizing how you can use the game room as a bedroom when you need to because of a sauna. Saunas are great. I'm, that's cool. But we should not let that drive our home buying process. Well, we could make the payment. No, 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 no. That, that this could be your this home could become a burden to you. It's supposed to be a blessing to you. If we sit down and have a strategy session, we can draw a hard line and go. That sounds really cool, but it's not worth that financial burden that that's going to become after that point. It's why phrases like the industry standard make me laugh, right? Because yeah. the industry standard is that. You're just going to go show me a house and then you're going to do whatever it is that you want to do. Well, yeah. Well, every other agent's willing to do yeah. that. Well, that's not always a great sign, right? Everyone else does it that way is not usually the best way to lead to your most likely best outcome. Now, also not, not likely to be your best outcome for you to have no idea the condition of your roof. We have had some weather this year, folks. We have had high winds. We have had really fast, hard rains, and obviously we've had some hail. So if you haven't had somebody up on your roof in the last couple of years, period, then you are risking a bigger problem than you should. You should go to pmrroofing.com, ask for our buddy Jordan and have him check out your roof. But if you've had any of that weather and you haven't had somebody come out and take a look, you might be risking uh, a mistake with your insurance and a mistake with your home. Go to pmrroofing.com, ask for Jordan Collins and have them check out the condition of your roof. You can trust pmrroofing.com. If you're thinking about, even remotely thinking about, buying, selling, or investing in real estate anytime soon, go to toddtremonteteam.com, or just like my son says. toddtremonteteam.com. Welcome to the fall real estate market. That's right, the fall real estate market. If you pay attention to this show, DFW Real Estate, then you know that real estate is a lagging industry, meaning the activity of today in the real estate industry is the data of tomorrow or 30 to 60 days lagging. If you put a house under contract right now today, Saturday afternoon, you're most likely to close and fund and then own that home four to eight weeks from now, which means August, which means the mindset of this market begins to transition into a back to school fall semester mindset now, right now, when you can no longer, unless you have a cash buyer, you know, but most people that are putting a home under contract this week are going to move in after we're back to school. Reality check. I'm sorry, but that's true. Now, if you're a cash buyer, 
if you're in a hurry and you know exactly what you want and your di- your financing is all dialed in, you still have a chance to get something done by the end of July, first week of August. But, you know, we're back to school like the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th ish, depending on different school districts and schools in DFW. So there's your wake up call. If you're a real estate agent listening, we're hiring right now for less than one year of experience, but um, you need to be thinking fall market. You need to be preparing sellers that they're getting into the market at a time where things change dramatically. If you're a real estate agent and you only have one size fits all strategy for sellers, I would just dramatically encourage you to, edu- you know, to learn, to grow, to have more than one strategy, to customize your approach. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying a single one size fits all listing strategy is not great for all your clients. Things change this time of year. We are now in a fall mindset, a fall strategy for real estate. And it's important that people know that. And now. And you you like the fall. Oh, I love the fall for buying and selling. This first segment's brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team. That's right, mortgage team. Mortgage is a little bit of a dirty word right now because people don't like the rates much, Courtney. But I tell you what, our clients are working with Patrick Glaros and they're really, really happy with the service with the opportunity they have for rates in the market, with cost, with their cash to close scenarios. Find out what all of your options are, not just what some bank can offer you, but all of your options with Patrick Glaros and his incredible team that have been uniquely put together based on their specific God-given giftedness and their desire to add value in the world. Go to patrickglaros.com. That's G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. For any mortgage needs, your home, your lake house, second home, refinance, investment properties, questions about where rates are going in the future, any of those things, all that starts online at patrickglaros.com. Now, here is the situation. Because we're thinking fall market, we're beginning to think about where are the opportunities. As things change, when markets move, there are always opportunities. And a lot of the opportunity has to do with people, other people who do not change their approach. So pop quiz, Courtney. Mm -hmm. If a seller has the mindset, which most sellers do, that the best time to sell your home is spring and summer. And summer comes to an end and you have not yet sold your home. Is that seller likely to be more optimistic or less optimistic? Less. Yeah pretty obvious, right? So if I'm a buyer, second question, do I want to buy from a seller who is more confident or less confident in selling? Less. Ooh, so when might I want to buy as a buyer? Mm, Fall. Oh my gosh, you're three for three. You're currently batting a thousand. Pretty proud. 100% on this quiz. So if you're a home buyer, you should not at all be discouraged the, that we are heading into, from a real estate perspective, the fall market. As a matter of fact, I think you should be excited. My wife and I always buy our homes in the fall. Now, last time we bought, we bought in the spring because our other investment real estate process dictated it, and I hated it. I legitimately did not like it. I didn't think I got as good of a deal as I normally would. I it. For me, I want to take advantage of an opportunity to win on both sides. I believe that spring and summer are great times to, to buy and sell. And we help clients customize strategies to kill it and both. And we've been doing that lately. But I think we have some of the best opportunities for our sellers and our buyers in the fall. And I bet you could guess why based on the pop quiz so far. Because? We're going to coach our sellers to not be... Not low confident. confidence sellers. And why would we do that? Because it's the fundamentals of the market are still great for our sellers. Low inventory, rising prices, reasonable, if not more than reasonable buyer demand. But stereotypical thinking says, shoot, spring and summer's over. Rates aren't super, super, super low. Am I going to have to wait until next spring and summer? So we're going to educate and coach and counsel our sellers to not buy into all the stereotypes and to position and to market and to prep to prep and to communicate and in a compelling way the opportunity that is their home to sell high and quickly or whatever timeline they want. We guarantee we'll do that. And to then obviously win on the buy side 
because most likely we're buying from a low confidence seller. Now, obviously there's a bunch of strategy tied to the buy side as well, but that's what the market provides. And then we go beyond that with custom strategy and our approach to the market. So that's why it matters that we're transitioning from the summer market to the fall market. I know you like a big butt segment. So there's one, I can give you another one, but one is we're transitioning from the summer to the fall, but there might actually be more opportunity for you in the fall market, definitely as a buyer. And as a seller, we have created unique strategies built for the fall market in Dallas, Fort Worth. Now you're hearing radio ads and billboards and all this stuff from other brokers and agents that I will not name that are not local and have not built a custom system for this market and different systems and strategies for different seasons and different rates and different neighborhoods. But we've got that for you. We are built for you here in DFW and we have custom strategies just for the fall for you to win big buying, selling or both. And man, I think if you're doing both, this is a great time. Go to ToddTremontyTeam.com. We'll get you taken care of. Or you can call us or text us right now. 214-310-0008 or just save that phone number in your cell phone and when you're ready call or text 214-310-0008 okay you brought up the big butt segment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have another big butt because all the headlines have been warning about a market crash contrary to the transcription on some of our online videos this is a but but I like to keep the extra T. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So, all the headlines have been warning about a market crash. But, well, what say you, Todd Tremonti? Courtney, I'm so sorry, sad, fear mongering mm -hmm. journalists. Mm -hmm. There, there wasn't, there isn't a crash. There's, it's We're, not happening. I know everybody wants just blood in the streets so that people will read their headlines, but no crash has come. It's I don't think it's coming. It's almost like we could see that there wasn't a giant dismal crash coming. Now, <clears throat> let me be clear. Anything can happen, right? Tomorrow could be some crazy geopolitical announcement of a war could start. There could be some financial meltdown that just nobody saw coming. But at the moment, based on what we know, interest rates couldn't haven't done it. Uh, inflation hasn't done it. Politics hasn't done it. And the reason is, there are many reasons. There, there's too many reasons to, for anyone to fully know. But my job as a radio host, as a broker, as a leader of the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team here, helping thousands of people and hundreds of homes every year in Dallas-Fort Worth, is to take the data that we do have and take the experience that we have and take the on-the-ground conversations that we get to have with real people with real homes every single day and look out into the future a little bit and make the best educated uh, guess, educated expectation as we can. And that is that homeowners are willing to buy and sell right now. Now, there's a lot of reluctance. A lot of people are saying, I don't want to sell because I have a really low rate. And we believe that that is easing up and will ease up more certainly between now and the end of the year and definitely next year. We believe that interest rates are probably about as high as they're going to go. There could be a little bit more upward movement, but for the most part, we think we're where we're going to go. And as soon as the fourth quarter of this year, if not in the next calendar year, we think we'll, we'll see rates come down some. That's based on much smarter people than us that are much more in tune with the Federal Reserve and mortgage banking and things like that. But we believe that we're going to see buying and selling open up a little bit between now and the end of the year and a, and a good bit more next year and quite a bit over the next couple of years. So what does that mean for people? That means that because people are happy with their rates, they're not panicking, and maybe more importantly than anything, because people have equity in their homes. We're not seeing a lot of people panic. We're seeing people frustrated for sure. We're seeing people that would like to move, but they don't want to move because they like their rate. They may not love their house, but they like their rate. It's weird. We've rarely seen people not move just because of rate when they, they're they having babies and wanting bigger homes. They're wanting to be in different school districts or closer to their new jobs or different jobs or be out on some land. But they're not making those decisions 
because of interest rates. And that makes logical sense. But this is a rare deal where there's a lot of people waiting to do something that they've wanted to do for a while. And we believe they're going to start doing what they want to do soon. What we have, what we can say with no doubt, based in fact and experience and data, is that we have not seen a housing crash in North Texas. We said we wouldn't see it this year, or, you know, in the last 12 months, and we haven't. That doesn't make us brilliant. That just means we paid attention to the fact that people were not going to lose their homes at mass scale because of equity, because they gained so much equity the last four or five years that um, they have equity to protect themselves from desperate situations. And the reason a lot of people aren't moving is because they like the financial situation they're in but it isn't necessarily because everyone's still in a home that they love. So we think we're going to see some activity pick up. We believe that's or, those are some of the reasons that we haven't seen uh, really harmful real estate conditions. Uh, there's a lot of data out there that says this kind of mass quitting resignation from jobs and just, I'm not going back and all this stuff kind of fizzled a bit you know it wasn't like this whole generation of millennials decided they're not going to work and they're just all going to go pursue their passion projects no millennials are buying houses by the way millennials are just now entering statistically the most likely years to buy and sell homes like age 33 34 35 36 the bulk of millennials by the way more millennials are entering that age range than there ever were baby boomers at one time just take that into note for a second now, there's been all this argument for the last decade plus. Millennials aren't buying homes at the rate that others have. The stats just don't prove that out. The stats prove that millennials have bought houses like freaking crazy the last few years. They've slowed a bit with rates. They don't want to get hit in the face with the overly expensive stuff. It turns out millennials are pretty smart. And they are now getting to the place where they want to, and many of them will need to, need being a... You can define that differently, but they want more space. Uh, so I think we are poised for a really healthy market uh, over the next few years. But it doesn't mean it will not have challenges. It doesn't mean that we're just like going to boom back to post-COVID. That was truly unnatural. Mm -hmm. Unnatural. But the market we're in is good. If you want to buy or sell a home, I want you to call us right now. 214-310-0008. We're not going to sell you anything unless you are ready to go and buy a sell a home. What we are going to do for you that almost no other real estate company in town does is sit down and have a full strategy session with you with no obligation, with a full time, fully dedicated real estate agent that I have personally recruited, trained, mentored, and hired. And I think the world of, or I wouldn't put them in front of you at no cost, no obligation. You can figure out what is the right time for you. What is the right approach for you? We can get you connected with mortgage lenders to find out the right budget. You cannot get started in that preparation process too early, but sadly, most people do wait too late. Don't make that mistake. 214-310-0008 or online. ToddTremontiTeam.com. At ToddTremontiTeam.com. Todd, I need you to give me an answer in under a minute. What do people need to know about Westlake? Ooh, Westlake. Um, in Texas, Westlake is usually thought of as an Austin town, but Westlake in the DFW area is actually quite a hot spot. So we're talking west of Grapevine Lake, um, and we're talking about generally thought of as a very high-end community. Well-regarded schools, nice homes. On average, you're talking about a much larger home than in other parts of the Metroplex. Statistically, averages can be really misleading, but you're talking about an almost 6,000 square foot average. Now, the median- That's large. That's big. The median size is smaller than that. We're talking three to 4,000 square feet, but there are some monsters, and there are more monsters in Westlake than there are in almost any other area. Obviously, Highland Park, South Lake, some other areas to think about. But Westlake is a place where you have some big, beautiful, nice homes. A lot of newer ones, big lots, but you're talking very, very nice homes on very, very nice lots in somewhat of a secluded area, kind of hedged by the lake. So the highways and the main roads aren't flying through there. Lots of great retail, great restaurants, really good shopping, closer to the airport, but north near the lake, a really desirable place to be. Nice job. I think we landed that in under 60. You killed it. Um, okay. So, you know, you mentioned 
earlier that we are hiring. Mm -hmm. And we've been working our way through your book mm -hmm. about the truths. Yeah, so the book is called Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career, right? This was written for real estate agents, right? We coach and consult and train agents all over the year. As a matter of fact, in October, we have our big event. We'll have over 300 agents here. Um, but the second part of the book, second part of the title, Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and The Truth That Can Make You Wealthy. It's not guaranteed to make you wealthy, but it can if you actually pay attention and apply it. So we're on number seven, I think, of That's the right. truths that can make you wealthy. Wait for this one, Courtney. Buckle up. Truth number seven, value time over money. Well, that's easy for you to say because you have money. Mm -hmm. Right. That's everyone's number one complaint, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Let me ask you a, a pop quiz question number four, I believe. You were three for three earlier, so let's see how you do here. Um, can you get more money? Yes. Okay, that is true. Can you create more time? I cannot. Ooh, also true. Five for five. Okay, so now I'm not saying it's easy to, to get more money, but it's possible. And it is not possible to create more time. Time uh, is the most limited resource that we have in our lives. We have some control over health. We have some control over money. We have some control over food, location, all these other things. We have literally no control over the amount of time. Now, we have control over how we use that time, which is why I tell people, especially professionals, to value your time over money. So there are times when we should spend money to protect our time. If you're a real estate professional, there are 10 million things that you could invest your time in, but there are times that you should invest money to make up for that time. That may be technology, coaching, training, uh, the right arrangement with a broker or a team leader or a partner or something like that. There is this sense that a great real estate agent will just do, 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 do everything themselves. The reality is you cannot be great at almost anything if you are trying to do everything. So a great real estate agent, and this is important for consumers too, is an agent that has some people around them, some technology around them, and they're making a reasonable, if not significant investment in the outcome of the client. An agent that is doing every single thing themselves cannot do all those things at a high level. They're also going to dramatically limit their income and their freedom and probably their health by doing everything themselves, picking up checks, taking out signs and lock boxes, staging, photography, you know, data, track record keeping, spreadsheets, banking, all that stuff, plus marketing and negotiation. No one's great at all that. Nobody is wired to be highly gifted at all of those things. So we invest some money to protect our time so that we can invest our time in the areas where our giftedness will produce the best results for our clients and where we can maintain balance and be a healthy human being. That's actually best for the client also. What do you say? Well, one of my favorite memes is that you have the same amount of time as Beyonce. Well, she's been somewhat productive in her <laughs> life. You don't know this, but I went to junior high with one of the girls in Destiny's Child. Oh. She didn't quite make it to the final big, 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 no. big deal. None of them made it. I mean, Beyonce left every one of them in the I desk. I know. It's like Justin and NSYNC. Yeah. But I can't even that sounds bad, but nope. Uh, Houston, Texas went to junior high with one of the, the fourth member of Destiny's Child. Once they really hit it, it was just three of them. And then pretty quickly Beyonce left them in the dust. No, but hearing you talk about that just makes it uh, all the more appealing to me to join a team. I cannot fathom trying to do all that myself. But what's crazy is that's actually a healthy perspective. But once someone gets into the real estate industry, it's almost the opposite. I don't want to be on a team. I don't want to give up commission. Yeah. I want to I want to build my own brand. And I'm saying that in kind of a jerk voice. Some people are gifted and wired to be the All operator things. of a brand. No, no one is gifted for that. Not one person. Jesus. And then no one else. But the reality is um, there's nothing wrong with being an independent agent, but you still need to bring in those other vendors, those other technologies, mm. those other resources. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't do this, quote, alone, but you don't necessarily have to be on someone else's team, but you need a broker that can help. You might need a coach or, you know, a title rep, a marketing friend or a client. You know, you might need to hire those people. You don't necessarily have to have them all on your team. Now, what our team does is we operate as if we were 
a 10,000 person company, meaning we want to have tools and technology of a much bigger company and over provide that to the 10, 12, 13, 14 people we have on our team so that an agent is like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest gift to me. I can go out and make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and spend time with my family and grow as a person, not just a salesperson and love what I do and have real balance of my health, my income, my family, my service, my, you know, things I'm passionate about. So yes, we help our team members keep that balance of time and money and talent, which should be pointed in certain directions. Not everybody has the same talent, therefore not everybody should perform the same duties. And there's a lot more roles in real estate than just sales agent. So anyway, all that to say, if you haven't gotten your landscaping dialed in, we're past the point where you got it ready for summer. We're at the brutally hot period where you might actually be outside less. But I want you thinking now about my favorite season in North Texas, which is fall. Not just for real estate reasons, but because fall is when the weather gets somewhat tolerable again, but the landscaping still looks good, right? In springtime, it doesn't necessarily look good yet. Things are coming out of dormancy. In the fall, we have all the benefits of the flowers and the grass and the trees and the shade from summer, but we're starting to get slightly cooler temperatures and better weather. Prepare your landscaping for fall now. Reach out to Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. Ask for my buddy, Alan. Tell them Todd Tremonti sent you. That's keenlandscaping.com. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate this fall, because that is the market that we're heading into, I want you to reach out to our team now. But also, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing anytime in 2024, we still guarantee to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. That's right. We guarantee to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. 214-310-0008 or online at toddtramaniteam.com where you can check out podcast episodes, radio show episodes, educational videos, search any house from any agent in all of DFW and contact our team. That's toddtramaniteam.com. <laughs>